With the recent passing of Robbie Coltrane, beloved actor who played Hagrid, many Harry Potter fans are reminiscing about their other favorite performers from the series. So far, 23 of the actors featured in one or more of the Harry Potter movies have passed away, some of them passing of natural causes, and some of them were taken much too soon due to accidents. Let's have a look and pay tribute to each of the fallen performers that brought magic to this stellar franchise. The most recent death amongst the Harry Potter fans cast is Robbie Coltrane. Coltrane played the part of Rubius Hagrid throughout all eight films. Allegedly, while J.K. Rowling was first approached on the matter of adapting her beloved book series to movies, her first comment was she wanted Robbie Coltrane to be cast as Hagrid. All of the fans agree with no one else could have brought the same energy, purity, and physical likeness to the role. Coltrane's performance was unbeatable. Hagrid was the character he was born to play. All of the fans will cherish their favorite on-screen moments of Hagrid. And remember the wonderful man behind the iconic character, Robbie Coltrane passed away this October 2022 due to health-related problems. Rest in peace. Most of the fans will remember Vern Troyer's incredible performance as the character Grip Hook, at least in the earlier movies. The character was later played by a different actor for the last few films, Vern Troyer, famed actor from The Love Guru and Austin Powers franchise, unfortunately passed away at the age of 49. Very sadly, this death was untimely and ruled as a suicide. The fans will remember Troyer for his part of Grip Hook and the franchise's first portrayal of the character, while Grip Hook does not have much screen time, fans will understand his role as the overachieving story is one of the most important catalysts that sets off the final chains of events in the last two films. The next entry on our list is Terrence Baylor, who played the part of the Bloody Baron in the film series. The actual role of the Bloody Baron does become more complex in later movies. The first movie that introduced him, the Sorcerer's Stone, the Philosopher's Stone, had just a few scenes of the house ghosts. The Bloody Baron is the ghost of Slytherin House, as expected. Slytherin infamously housed all the dark wizards and the students that were in Slytherin House tended to be treated as a single evil entity despite the many, many virtuous Slytherins throughout magical Britain. Terence Bayer was a very popular actor in New Zealand as well as his work on the Harry Potter franchise. He was 86 when he passed away in 2016. Most fans, especially of the fourth movie in the saga, The Goblet of Fire, will remember the very large role that Barty Crouch Sr. had in the story. Barty Crouch Sr. was played by Roger Lloyd Pack. Roger acted in the film alongside David Tennant, who played the role of Barty Crouch Jr. The Crouches remain some of the most important characters in relation to the rise of Lord Voldemort. Roger Lloyd Pack passed away in 2014 at the age of 69 when he lost his battle with pancreatic cancer. The fans will remember Roger for his incredible performance of Barty Crouch Sr. Anyone familiar with the story of Harry Potter will be aware of the character Cornelius Fudge. Fudge is the Minister of Magic, at least in the first five installments of the series, to be replaced by the new minister in the sixth film, The Half-Blood Prince. The actor who played the role in the films was Robert Hardy. Fans agree that Hardy's performance is impeccable as the bumbling, narcissistic minister, desperate to remain in power regardless of the safety of his people. Hardy was known for many other roles during his massive acting career, including numerous roles of Winston Churchill. Hardy will be dearly missed. As one of the largest and most important roles in the entire franchise, Richard Griffiths as Vernon Dursley delighted the fans with Griffiths' amazing performance. Most fans would agree that this casting choice felt like he'd been lifted directly from the book. Considering how accurate some of the performances are in these movies, Dursley plays a role in almost all of the installments of the series and remains one of the most important characters in the story. Griffiths loved to act on stage as well as on movie sets. He was part of the Royal Shakespeare Company and performed in numerous renditions of famous plays. Griffiths was 65 when he passed away in 2013 due to heart problems. As most fans are aware, Dumbledore's part has been played by two different actors. Richard Harris played the iconic role in the first two installments of the Harry Potter movie series and was later followed by Michael Gambon, who took over the after Harris's death in 2002. Harris had Hodgkin's disease and passed away at the age of 72. Most fans fans would agree that the depiction of Dumbledore in the first two films was spot on. So much so that no other actor could carry on his legacy, Gambon was wildly successful as Dumbledore, but many fans wonder how the role would have been played if Harris had been alive to appear in the other movies. Paul Ritter played only a minor role in the Harry Potter franchise of a wizard called Eldred Werple, yet he was known for acting in many other roles. He starred in Friday Night Dinner television series as Martin Goodman and played a role in Quantum of Solace, James Bond. Ritter was only 54 when he died due to complications from a brain tumor. The role of Ernie Prong, the driver of the night bus, was adapted from the depiction of such in the book. The film version was a wacky chain of events introducing Ernie Prong, played by Jimmy Gardner. 
Turner in a very different but not unpleasant version of the book. Ernie is shown falling asleep at the wheel, taking comedically large bites of sandwiches, and responding only to a shrunken head on his dashboard. Gardner will be remembered for taking on the role and making it his own. He sadly passed away in 2012 at the age of 85. Garrick Ollivander, the owner of the wand shop in Diagon Alley, was played by John Hurt. The scene in the first movie when Harry obtains his first wand is truly one of the most memorable and emotional scenes in the film. This is the first time Harry realizes that magic is real and that he can do it. Hurt brought deep emotion and weight to the role of Ollivander and will be missed dearly by his fans. Hurt lived to be 77. A name on this list that doesn't seem to quite fit due to her unexpected death. We will next discuss Helen McCrory, who played the role of Narcissa Malfoy, Draco Malfoy's mother. McCrory had many other roles under her belt and will be remembered for her spectacular performance in the last three movies of the Harry Potter series. Helen passed away at the young age of 52 after battling cancer. Hazel Douglas, known for her role as Bathilda Bagshot, is next on our list. Douglas passed away at 92, but will be remembered for her role as Bathilda Bagshot, specifically for the talent and energy that Douglas was able to bring to the role. This is especially true when considering that the role boiled down to a corpse walking around, being controlled by a sentient snake. Within the series, Bagshot is known for not only the role in the story, but as the historian and author of A History of Magic. Fans of the Goblet of Fire will remember the opening scenes containing the muggle character, Frank Bryce. Bryce is brought to life by Eric Sykes, and he's sticks to the source material to a T. He is perfect in the role of a frustrated, sad man accused of a horrific crime he did not commit. Sykes lived to be 89 and left behind many iconic roles from his career. Elizabeth Spriggs, next on our list, played the part of the Fat Lady in the Harry Potter movies. The Fat Lady appears in the most recent installments of the story as she is the hanging portrait door to the Gryffindor common room. Spriggs is known for her take on the character and adding many genius moments of comedic relief throughout the series. Spriggs passed away in 2008 at the age of 78. Next up, we have perhaps the most famous death amongst the Harry Potter cast, Alan Rickman. Rickman was stunning in his absolutely perfect portrayal of Severus Snape. Severus Snape remains one of the series' most complex and morally great characters in the series. Rickman brought real-life magic to the role, especially upon second viewing, which lays out very clear information that would become apparent in later movies. It's rumored that J.K. Rowling had told Alan about all of his characters' layers and secrets, so he would be able able to act as closely to the character in the book. Rickman will be dearly missed, and we will always remember him for this incredible performance. Alfred Burke, who played Armando Dippet, is up next. The character of Dippet, like Professor Everard, is a long-deceased character who's brought to the screen by way of flashback. He appeared in the Chamber of Secrets in said flashback. When Harry's transported to a memory from Tom Riddle's school days, Burke was 92 years old when he passed away. This completes our 2022 list of all 23 actors from the Harry Potter franchise franchise who have tragically passed away. As time goes on, we will lose more of these beloved performers, and all of the fans should make the point to enjoy the movies and cherish them while they can. We never know when we might lose more actors. That being said, thank you so much for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one.